What's up guys, this is Cher talking, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna make a full review for the Romancing Festival Ocelus banner. That brings a rapier version of Ocelus that is an evasive counter tank, a sword version of Princess White Rose that has both offensive and defensive buffs, and Constance, a full support unit with defense capabilities. Well, we're gonna start talking about Ocelus, we have... Uh, focus on Dexterity because she now uses Rapier skills, but she also has 100% STR that was buffed in global so that she can inherit sword skills just fine. Her agility and intelligence are also high, so she can be considered a hybrid unit with focus on four different status. She doesn't suffer so much from having many focus since her endurance is 60% and will is 70. I saw worse cases in the past, but because she's actually half of a tank, it could have been much better. Well, we have double arrows for intelligence, that means that she is also good for debuffs if you inherit some skills, but we will talk about that later. First passive is called Master Stance. When she is on full HP, she has 25% chance to evade attacks. If she's not on full HP, she gets 20% increase in damage output, and damage taken will be reduced by 25%. Then she has high protection that we all know decreases damage taken by 30%, increases damage output by 20. Alongside Fart of 7, that gives her 40% damage increase. So she has 60% at all times, and then 80% when she's not on full HP. Damage is actually good, and you have to remember that her Mystic version, to get 60%, she lost. 3 LP on the start of the battle. This is how power creep works in this game. Now, uh, she gets 30% damage reduction at all times, and then 30 minus 25 again, if you are not on full HP. So she doesn't take much damage, even through her endurance and will are not high. If you have someone buffing one of those two status, it's even better. Now, skill number one is called Vow of Protection. For free, you have a fast support skill that has two different effects. The first, she gets this defensive cover that will give her a 50% chance to take an ally's place to receive damage. And in that case, she will receive 35% less damage when covering. So it's fast, that means that you will be using it before the enemy attacks. It makes sense if you are in a fight where the boss focuses on single target attacks and you, well, doesn't even need to place her on a position where she draws more aggro, because she herself is not exactly the best type of tank, rook on her endurance and will. You can actually use her as a secondary support unit. Let's say you're using Rising Phoenix X formation and you can place her poke in the middle and then just have assholes in your party, use this uh, Vol protection and try to protect someone else because Polka will take more hits, but he will not take all the time. But actually, you can also use her exactly in the center of some formations, take less damage with herself, and protect some others. There are two different ways to use this character as a North tank and as a central tank. Now, the interesting fact about Vol protection is that this is an active skill. So you can pass it through inheritance to any of her sword styles. But in my opinion, the only one that actually makes sense is the Lunar New Year style that has high protect tension, helping a little to decrease the damage that she may receive when covering. Even then, she still has low endurance, so it will depend on the challenge. It will also work for Remembrance if you need a cover tank there, but I think that in Sword Remembrance we already have good styles that can handle themselves, like Steelblade Light, Steelblade Phoenix users. Now, um, she can also do damage, but you'll be doing damage mostly on overdrive turns. We have 100 Lotus, a 7 VP attack that deals pierce damage with C power, 18 mod, and hits two times. Depending on the weapon that you are using, this can be translated into the end of double S power or the very start of triple S power. It will help a little because she does have good damage passives, but she's not exactly a real damage dealer. Then, if you are facing multiple enemies, you can use Noble Red Rose. This is a 9 BP skill that hits for Pierce and Slash this time and has a chance to debuff Endurance and Will by 20%. Her intelligence is pretty high, she will be debuffing most of the time. 
and it will increase the damage output of the other characters. He's not exactly super fast, but will be attacking most of the time before your other characters. So it's a way to just help out when she's not just protecting the party. But you'll be using Valve Protection most of the time, she was designed like this. Now, as for Inheritance, we can actually change her role in a fight. If you have faced in the final battle, you can inherit Mirage Stamp Plus, and this is a 3BP skill that debuffs the intelligence of all enemies. And she has very high intelligence, she becomes the best version of herself for that role specifically, because she would take less damage than the Lunar New Year style, and has very good dexterity, STR, and intelligence, and even agility. So, you can also inherit the Plume Dance skill that is double the cost, but debuffs the intelligence by 20% instead. But it's not exactly good, because she cannot cycle this all the time. You have to skip one turn, so it's only if you don't have facing the final battle style. Uh, you can also inherit Rising Nova Plus. This is a 9 MP skill that deals slashing hit damage and will buff break your enemy. Some bosses will buff themselves when they attack on, on the start of their turn, becoming very dangerous. And it's sometimes required to buff break them to survive. So we have Rising Nova Plus. Uh, other interesting inheritance comes from either her S version or some others that has Rosario and Pale Plus, so that you can do slash damage instead of pierce damage on overdrive. Remember that 100 Lotus is only pierce. Those are all the inheritances that matter for this version of Asus. But Asus competes with a very good style, that one being Mask. Well, he only has 25% chance to cover an ally, but it is because he was designed differently. He actually wants to be on a position where he draws more enemy attacks, and he can even taunt by inheritance of great adventure from his gun style. And this also increases his defense three times, meaning that he barely takes any damage. He also has much better endurance and will. So when he gets hit, he takes less damage. And because he taunts, your other characters will be less attacked by single target spews and spells. So um, Mask wants to get hit more often, while Asilus can be placed in any slot in your formation and she will just over the different allies with 50% chance. They work differently, but Mask can do a half trick. He can heal the party when he reaches overdrive and does not need to use an active skill to protect. So much more open for different strategies. I think that your assholes will only make more sense if you are on Remembrance where she will be uh, on a rapier stage, allowing you to survive. Because rapiers are not exactly the easiest remembrance battles. But, to be honest, she is not exactly as useful as many other support units in hard challenges. Many people will never think about using her in the place of, well, time, global accent press, buffers like Nawal's daughter, and now even Constance, another character that we have in this banner. So this reduces her utility for the long run, and well, it makes her actually skippable. She will not change much the flow of our challenges. She will be receiving a standard double S grade as a character that works, but it's just not the best on what she does. Well, looking to the future, there is yet another rapier style for Asilus, and she it's a different design, actually has better dexterity, she will do much more damage, she's more offensive oriented, uh, she gets stronger as turn passes and has a chase mechanic where she will just chase with one attack, call it Rose Hit. So still keeps a way to resist damage, but it's not as defensive as the current one. The next is Princess White Rose, she is a sword style that can inherit light spells. And because she uses words, now she needs high SDR. Needed high dexterity, but 70% is not that big, and she may miss in hard challenges. She still needed agility and intelligence for spells, so we have 94 and 95, and big love and charisma to heal. So she took a hit on endurance and will. We have very bad will for 
hard challenges. She can get inflicted with ailments with ease. So it's a big problem, actually. Her endurance is bad, but we were expecting this from a healer. Well, uh, the wheel is lower than any of her recent double S styles, as you can see. This is an off banner with 72. Her Christmas style has 72 as well, even a very old Global Axis style has 71. Now for passive, the first one is called Ailment Ward. On the end of a turn, we have 37% chance to cleanse all status elements, and also remove all the buffs that were applied to the party. Well, I don't like chance to cleanse, because, well, if you are in a fight where the enemy will affect you with ailments, you will be inflicted on start sometimes, but then after that, if you are protecting yourself rightfully, you will not be hit with ailments. And even if you do, you need instant cleans and not a chance to do that on the end of a turn. So it's more like, well, you are in a fight where the enemy has very high chance to inflict something right on start, and then you will start till she actually triggers this on turn one and you can keep the fight. The uh, debuff removal part is actually interesting because we don't have this mechanic as an active skill, so okay. But we do with single target spells, but not with AoE. Then the second passive is called Focus Defiance 5. Weak attack damage increases by 20%, and if you are hit by an attack that will cause resist, damage taken will be reduced by 40%. How does that work? Well, you need 35 points of resistance in different elements. If your boss attacks with Slash, just be sure that you have 35 points of resistance against Slash, for example. Well, it's easier to do that right now in the game because we have Proof of Word Tower, an accessory that gives 20 points of resistance to all elements. So you can actually choose your equipment accordingly and you decrease damage by 40% at all times. Then we have High Protect Tension, increasing her damage by 20% and reducing damage she receives by 30. So, even if you don't equip her accordingly, she will reduce damage by 30%. If you equip her accordingly, she will reduce by 30 and then by 40. Two damage reduction passives will keep this Princess White Rose very, very defensive, something that she didn't have in the past. Well, we still use Halloween Princess White Rose because of the will buff on hit, but remember? 50% endurance is what makes she die so fast in hard challenges, even the low will as well. But, well, when she gets hit, she buffs will, it's not the problem. The endurance is a problem, and not having any damage reduction pass. This is fixed by this version of Princess White Rose. But, well, we don't have the passive that buffs will on hit. We were kind of expecting a change in the first passive to something like that, or even, well, buff will when she attacks but they decided not to. I'm starting to think we will get a Global X version of Princess White Rose somewhere in the future that will have uh, damage reduction passives and they will buff on hit because that's what happened with Golden Ball. Remember, Golden Ball had a good style that was kind of limited with low will. That was this one here. That was well, still pretty good style, even better than the new one. <laughs> but the new one didn't have the mechanic that will buff endurance when hit, but then they change it that in the second style. So that's why everyone was expecting this change in Princess White Rose as well, but didn't happen, but may happen in the future. But okay, uh, at least she is now very defensive and will survive in hard challenges. But what exactly does she do? Well, the first skill is called Blood Sucker, a uh, 1 BP attack with the power and slash damage that recovers HP and we recover for 1000 or more yeah because she has very high love and charisma for only one BP this is amazing because she does not need to cast a spell herself and she needs to bang heal it but I have to say that she will not take so much damage if you need to heal you probably have to heal someone else then the second skill is called Dadum it's a 4 BP support skill that is not fast that will buff three different status, three very offensive status, STR, Dexterity, and Agility. The only thing you don't have here is Intelligence, so it works for all sorts of damage dealers besides mages, so it's actually very nice. It's 4 BP, right? Well, we could compare this to iToken, and I do believe that this is the closest comparison. Itoken has first rhythm, and he buffs three different offensive status. He buffs STR, Dexterity, Intelligence, and Love. 
Love is good because it will allow you to heal better if you have many healers, uh, but it's not exactly the most important aspect of Fight Token. And he buffs by 30%, his buff value is higher. You still need to manually level up the skills for both characters to 99 to reach the max potential, well, something that you do on Seeker's Path, uh, but the cost of his skill is 5. It's okay, because he buffs 4 status, right? And it's fast, while Princess White Rose only buffs 3 status. One interesting fact is that it buffs STR and Agility together, something that martial artists need to increase their damage output. And the only other character that can do something similar is, of course, Metra, your main buffer in the game. And she can do that by being a victory that buffs STR, Agility, Intelligence and Endurance. Of course, you cannot compare uh, Princess White Rose with Matriarch, because Matriarch buffs Endurance, a defensive status that uh, makes much more value out of a buff. But, well, anyone else is a secondary buffer. If you have Matriarch, she's always your main one. So, you can actually have two buffers that will increase the damage output of a martial artist to the limits. Well, we have a very strong martial artist right now, that consider one of the top damage dealers in the game, that is Silver, Global X style, that you can actually now use two buffers to increase her damage potential, so that she is your only damage dealer. You still have to think about your character number 4 and 5, will probably be support, because when your damage dealer deals much damage, you don't need a second one, so makes sense to use that type of strategy. Since this skill uses 4 BP, that means that she actually loses 1 BP per turn. That's pretty similar to how Matriarch works as well, because remember, she uses 5 and she gets 4 BP per turn. Then the third skill is called Innocent Rose. For 9 BP, you have a single target attack with slash and some damage, triple S power 59 mod, pretty okay, and will also buff all surviving allies and ransom will by 30% on max level. Well, it's not a bad skill. The problem is the BP generation of Princess White Rose. She only gets 3 BP per turn. So if she uses this on turn 1, she will have to wait till turn 4 to use it again. And buffs decay. It's 30%, but then it will become very low, very fast. Because she cannot cast this at least once every 2 turns. If she had something like 5 BP generation, or this skill was... 8 and she had 4 BP per turn, and you could cast this every 2 turns, then you had something better. But it's not reliable, it will not help too much when you need will buffs, hence why we have a problem here. So she is exactly more useful for the Dadun skill to keep buffing offensive status, STR, Dexterity, and Agility. This will help in Remembrance battles. If you need more offense, and if you need a little more defense, it's okay to use Innocent Rose, but do know that this will not change much. Just increasing a little endurance and will every three turns will hardly save you. You may have different uh, support units in the future that will give you more value. So, uh, Princess White Rose can be considered a side raid to I Token because I Token has other stuff as well going for him. He can heal people in the end of a turn with 37% chance. He can give VP with 25% chance. He's also pretty defensive. He can also cleanse and heal if you need desperately. And even buff agility if you want. So these units are actually interchangeable. If you have one, you don't really need much the other. Some will be better in some situations than the other, but this is more for, you know, people that can actually summon for side grades. So... It's nice to have this Princess White Rose because she is better for martial artist setups, for example. But any of those two characters will work, in my opinion. Even if you need to restart the fight, eventually any will work. As for inheritances, the ones that makes more sense are on her S style, Ray of Hope, a 5 VP spell that heals a lot and cleanses. You can find the style on Final Eyes, so everyone has access to it. Then, you can also get from the Platinum style, Starlight Heal. This heals way less, still gets from 0 to max, but only cleanses from poison. The cost is much less, so it's always easier to use 2 BP instead of 5. Then, from her 
Halloween style, you can inherit Choco Ball if you want to debuff agility, but there are cheaper agility debuffers in the game right now. And then Princess Pumpkin Party. This is an APP skill that cleanses from all status elements and buffs endurance, will, love, and charisma. Well, by 30%. If you have someone else in your party that gives BP, it would be much better if you could reduce this to a two turn rotation. Start with Princess Punking Party and then use it again every two turns. But you will need someone like Rouge, Global Axis style, in order to give as much BP to help that. So, we also have another character that can do this better. Well, Time is in the game now and he's a meta character with Cow Rose, a support skill that gives the same buffs, endurance, will, love, and charisma by the same value and also adds something else in the top. Wired up medium that decreases damage by 25%. And he can cast this every two turns. You can use Cow Rose, then Junk Grab, and then Cow Rose again. And, well, Time has something else. He can heal when he gets to overdrive and even increase status ailments resistance. So time is still the superior unit when thinking about defensive support. So you could use it as a third buffer if you need extreme values, but I think the value is much lower on that position. If you have time uh, using this Princess White Rosa support for defense is much less important. But ignoring her defense setup, her offensive one is still very good, because you are buffing Dexterity, STR, and Agility. You can even use Leon and Martial Arts Silver together if you want. But even if you only choose one damage dealer, if you bring many buffers, it will allow this character to kill your enemy faster. And that avoids taking a lot of damage, avoids needing to heal more, and it's still one of the best ways to clear content. So, because of that, and she being very similar to White Token, she will receive a triple S grade in our tier list. But do you need both? Actually, no. But if you are a pain player and you have gems, it's something that you should consider to summon for Princess White Rose. And the last character is Constance. She is a club user with access to Earth spells, but you don't really need to get a Earth club for her because she will actually use support skill that does not use element anyway. Uh, she's a hybrid unit, so she needs intelligence in STR, and her agility is not that bad. Wheel is higher than Princess White Rose, for example. She still heals as well passively, so love and charisma are not good, but okay. Well, uh, for passes we have Overflowing Joy. She reduces damage taken for all allies by 20%, this is expected value, we will need to test, but it's just like Scrum Guard, something that we have with Empress, for example. Global X Empress has it, and many other characters as well. This needed all allies to be surviving in order to keep the effect working. Now, this version does not. Overflowing Joy does not mention everyone being alive. So, it's an upgrade over Scrum Guard. Not just that, but she also has this on the end of every three turns, counting from the start of battle. She will recover all surviving allies by very small effect. That should be around 170s right now in the game. So you get an extra heal even. Very nice, and I do believe they will use this more in the future. The second passive is called Defensive Measures. On the start of a turn, she has a 37% chance to grant all allies a defense boost that will decrease damage by 25% and also buff all surviving allies endurance by 15%. Well, the defense boost is good. It will happen once every three turns on average. You should take this as a bonus and not rely on it too much. It's just uh, something that will decrease the damage from enemies so that you don't need to heal as much. Count it as that. The endurance buff is also a plus, but you should not rely on it. Then the third passive, Enchanting Heal 2. On the start of a turn, she has a 25% chance to heal HP of all surviving allies by very small effect, that should be 170 on average, and buff their will by 15%. Well, again, this is something that will not happen all the time, once every four turns, and, well, the will buff is just an extra. Don't count on it to block ailments or debuffs or resist magical damage. So, as you see, she only has supportive passives, no damage passives, and two of them are reliant on RNG, so helping sometimes over long fights, but not something you should rely on 
Uh, but at least you have the heal every three turns with Overflowing Joy. And she will also heal on average of once every three turns with the second passive. That means that over three turns, you'll be healing two times on average. So not that bad, but you should not be counting on it triggering to survive. Now for skills, the first one is called a Mirage Hit, a 4BP AoE attack that can debuff Dex Routine. Her intelligence is good enough that it will land in most challenges. And, well, Dex or TD buffs are still one of the hardest ones to find. If you really need it, she can provide. Then we have Earth Dragon, a 6 BP attack with C power and 18 mod that hits all enemies. The attack itself is not bad for the cost, really good, and has a medium chance to stun. Well, this can help people that has difficulty against Kazinsi because he needs to be stunned, for example, or many future challenges where you need stun. But since it's 6 BP, you can only use it once every two turns. You will need uh, another uh, stunner that can use it every turn to keep the enemy stunned. And we have other people for single target. We have Bubble Pop, we miss Surfing or Undine. And for AoE, we have Macha, UDX style that she can keep using it uh, forever because it only costs 3 BP. But to be honest, you will not be using Mirage Hit or Earth Dragon because she's all about skill number 3. And then the last skill is called Promise Bouquet. For 9 BP, you have a support skill that is fast, that means that it always goes before your boss, and gives one of the up medium to the party for 3 turns, increasing the damage by 25%. It buffs all surviving allies, intelligence, love, will, and charisma by 30%. Well, the same value as White Rose skill number 3. And even has the same cost. Both characters only has 3 BP generation, so you can only use this once every three turns. It's not ideal. Uh, at least the Morali Up will be active at all times, but this buff value here will decay very fast. It's not like someone else that can use it every two turns, like I just said. Time. Time is still better than both characters for defensive support. But you have something here. Overflowing Joy will reduce damage by 20%, at all times, so you already have something going with Constance. You do not need to cast Ward up like uh, Time needs to, and Time needs to go before the boss attacks in order to keep it fully active. So uh, the Promise Bouquet will help as a secondary buffer or even a tertiary one, because sometimes you fight a boss that has so many ailments and so much damage that you need plenty of buffers, like the Egg Fight. You have hard challenges in the future that may need this type of setup. But the question is, uh, who is Constance trying to replace? And I have to say, one of those characters is Impress. Well, if you bring Global X Impress, you have Scrum Guard as well. And then you can uh, inherit from the Christmas style, Christmas Boom. So you have minus 20 and then minus 25 damage. It's pretty good. You can reduce damage by a lot, especially if you are on Tiger's Den. But... Let's say that you need the extra will, then it may make sense to bring Constance, because Constance will buff will, uh, even have a chance to buff it defensively, and will allow your characters to heal as well, reducing the stress of your healers. But if you can heal enough, and you do not need the extra will, you will always use Final Press. She will be more widely useful if you have... Uh, both the Global X in Christmas style. And she also loses in utility when compared to Time, another very important character that we use now. So uh, Constance has some interesting setup here, but well, uh, as a secondary buffer, she's contested by many other people as a tertiary one, very good in my opinion, because we don't have uh, buffers with Scrum Guard, not uh, status buffers at least. So, very unique. The problem is that on Club Remembrance battles, we already have way too much support. That is if you summon it for people like iToken, we have Mask, we discussed these characters in this video, so you already have plenty of support there. She's more about real hard challenges that are not based on Remembers, or if you skip it, some of the characters I mentioned it here. If you do not have time, then Constance makes more sense to you because you have a damage reduction and also has a way to increase four different status. Well, it's still a very useful setup. Now for S style, she can inherit Rockfall. This is a 2 BP attack that has a chance to buff intelligence. She does have good enough 
uh, intelligence that will allow her to debuff, but it's more about, well, you really need to debuff intelligence in someone with Scrum Guard to a little more volley. The second one is called Pulverize, and it's just damage, you should not inherit this. The third one is Rock Shield, and this one is actually okay, because it gives you a damage block and a defensive stance against spell attacks that decreases damage by 25%. So, this one lasts for 3 turns, the damage block only lasts for 1 turn, and it's only 1 hit. I don't think it's something very important, because in the end, only 1 hit for 9 BP cost is too much. And the defensive stance, if you really need, you have characters like Gustave, that gives that to the party, in his tank version. So, a much better character, still considered uh, the best support for magical fights. So, Constance is all about her original skills, hence why I said that you don't need a nerf club, because, well, the other spells are not even important unless you really need the intelligence debuff. It's all about keeping the screw guard and using skill number 3. And when she's not using skill number 3, she's using normal attacks. Would that be enough to help you in hard challenges? Yeah, sometimes. Is she better than Global X and Press or Time? In my opinion, no. But you can sometimes see more utility on bringing her instead of one of these characters. But it will depend on the situations, they will not be uh, that common. Those two characters are still better. And if you have time, you can skip both Constance and Princess White Rose if you want. If you are a free to play player that needs to save gens. Still, Constance is good enough to get a triple S grade in our tier list. Now, back to the banner image. Is this banner worth summoning for? Yes, but also no. First question, do you have time? If you do have time, then you have less value out of Constance, and you only get value from Princess White Rose. And also, this is not something really important. So, I will be giving a silver award for those that have time. Now, if you don't have time, then Constance can replace him for you, mostly. And I will be giving a silver plus award for those that do not have time. You can get Valor out of Constance and Princess White Rose, although Asshole is still pretty niche. So, still a good banner to pull in either scenario. But if you don't want to spend your gems now and want to wait one week to see what's coming, we may get Minstrel Song banners pretty soon. They are double banners. Uh, you can always wait one week till you decide. I will probably be pulling, but not on release. I want to wait a little, but that's my opinion. What's yours? Please see here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you still haven't, and I want to see you soon in the next video. Bye.